Uh, as I said, this is about Thanksgiving, it's about celebration. And uh, I, just, I want to say thanks to you as a church for being willing to allow volunteers to come and stay here these last two years, uh, to dirty your floors, to make a mess in your kitchen, uh, to spill food in the foyer, and yet still share the love of Christ uh, with those in the and those going through the, the aftermath of Sandy. Thanks for supporting us as staff and coming out to help and work alongside of us to gut houses, to clean out homes, and to rebuild people's lives um, as they put their lives back together. And a lot of those were your neighbors uh, who were flooded out by Sandy. Um, thanks for coming and joining us and walking the streets of Brigantine and the cul-de-sacs of Mystic Island and praying with people. Um, who were going through a rough time, uh, ministering to them when they were at the end of their rope and just overwhelmed with the task of putting their lives back together again. Um, as you know, one of our main uh, focus uh, areas at the beginning of the response was getting Green Team Bible Church back up and running, and uh, we were able to do that within about a six month, six to eight month span of time. Uh, where they've been able to go back into their community, have their fellowship, uh, use their building, and, and begin to minister uh, to each other and to the, the local community. And I wanted to share uh, a letter, part of a letter that was sent uh, to you uh, as a church from their church and to us as Reach Global. We want to take a moment to thank you for your service in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. Reach Global was essential to the rebuilding of our church, and we have not, would not have been able to reopen so quickly without your help. We have been, had many opportunities to thank and support Reach Global with food and offerings, but we also know that Beacon Church had a hand in our rebuilding as well. Thank you for opening up your doors to these workers, ministering to them, and to feeding, and for feeding them. And then they talk about some of the ministries that were affected uh, in their church, and they specifically mentioned the youth group. Uh, they have a small youth group down there, and as we've had teams come, we've had several youth group teams who have been able to come, and we were able to uh, have a meal uh, with Beacon Church, or with uh, Great Team Bible Church. They invited their youth to come, and the youth groups intermingled, and as a result of that, um, they say now we have a small but dedicated team of youth volunteers that are always available whenever the church building or members need them. And it was all possible because of the hospitality of Beacon and the hard work and service of Reach Global. So that's from Brick Team Bible Church, and that's signed sincerely Pastor Bill Davis and Pastor Colin Mina. So we were able to help get the Brick Team Bible Church back together but we're also help, able to help a lot of other folks um, put their lives back together. Um, it's also this morning about thanking God and celebrating what he can do to offer hope to the hopeless, comfort the brokenhearted, and bring salvation to those who are willing to trust in him. And God does this through us individually, as his children, and through us collectively, as a church. Um, he doesn't need us to accomplish his purposes. You know that? God can just do it. Amen. But he chooses instead not to do it that way. He chooses to use us. Uh, he chooses to use us who are broken, messed up, uh, and imperfect people to show his love to the world. He chooses to use us who are weary and worried and sometimes worn out to show our neighbors what it's like to be Jesus with skin on. We become the hands and feet the eyes and ears of Jesus to those who are experiencing anger, confusion, hopelessness, and desperation in their time of loss. And we don't normally focus on numbers, and we don't put a high priority on how many people we've touched or how many homes we put back together. But I did ask Jen to kind of put together, a, a, just pull some numbers together so you at least have an idea of, of the impact that has, has taken place. We've been able to help over 120 homeowners um, with your help of going out after Sandy hit and helping to gut in Mystic Island at Brigantine and even you know around the areas, even your you know, Pastor Jeff, who was affected as well, some in your congregation, 
who were affected by the storm. Um, and then their neighbors and going out into the community and being able to touch those other folks. So 120 homeowners that were helped. Um, we had over 800 volunteers come through, sleep, eat, live here uh, in the church. Now, if we would have told you at the beginning of the response you were going to have 800 people coming through here, what would your reaction have been? But it wasn't 800 people at one time. It's just that's kind of how God works. It was 5, 6, 12, 20, 30 people at a time who would come and who would serve and who would come through these doors and call Deacon home for a week uh, or half a week to come and serve uh, the folks in the area who were affected. As far as we know, there were three or four people who made decisions to follow Christ as a result of re us reaching out into the community, community and connecting with folks. Um, and that's, like I said, that's what we know of. There were countless more who had their beliefs about Christianity challenged as we have a collective, as a collective body between you and the volunteers that came through the doors, went out into the community, and pushed shoe leather to the gospel and took it to those who needed it. You know, if our response here is ending, uh, we're responding in other areas. New Orleans, uh, after Hurricane Katrina, this, this is going to be 10 years uh, this summer, this coming summer, that uh, Katrina and New Orleans are still 20 to 30,000 homes at last count that have not been put back together yet down there. Um, there's still folks in, there's still folks on Bradenton Island and in Mystic Island who don't know what to do. Uh, it's not that all the work is finished. It's just the work that God has called us to do at this period of time uh, is finished for us. Um, but I want to share uh, a letter that we got along the, along the way, and I don't know exactly when this came to us, but uh, I just happened to find it on my desk here uh, this morning. Uh, it says, Beacon Church, thank you to all of the groups that have come to help and work around my house. I am a widow, a widow and could use some more work to be done if possible. So there's still work that needs to be done. Um, and as we move on to other responses for us and serve Jesus elsewhere, you as a church remain here. There are still needs in your community. There's still work to be done. Don't stop being the hands and feet of Christ. Don't stop being Jesus with skin on uh, to those who are your friends, your neighbors, and in your community. And I want to share in closing uh, just what Paul wrote to the Philippians uh, in his letter to them. Uh, Philippians 1 6 says this, and I think I speak not only for us, or for me as a group, but for uh, as an individual, but for us as a group um, of, of folks from Reach Global Crisis Response. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the word. In spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. And that's the hope that we have as Christians, that that work is going to be finished. But until then, we are a work in progress. And God continues to use us to help others know him and help them know him better. So thank you for all that you have done for us. Amen. And for reaching out and being faithful to serve your community in this time.